Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order was the final Star Wars game to be released in the 2010s, and Star Wars games have certainly come a long way in the last decade. Hey everyone, it's Andrew, and today I thought I'd take a look back at every Star Wars game to be released during the 2010s. I did my best to find as many Star Wars games as possible released between 2010 and 2019, and I'm sure I've still missed a bunch, but here we go. Starting in 2010, there were actually 10 Star Wars games released this year, a huge year for Star Wars gaming. First off, we have Star Wars Clone Wars Adventures. This was an online virtual world MMO based on the Clone Wars TV show, in which players could create and customize their own avatar and engage in mini games and activities while hanging out with other players. The Jedi Temple on Coruscant acted as a hub world from which you'd play a bunch of mini games, interact with other players, interact with Jedi Knights like Obi-Wan, Mace Windu, and the game was kind of like a social hangout set in the Star Wars universe. However, unfortunately, Unfortunately, back in 2014, Sony Online Entertainment, the game's developer, announced they'd be shutting the game down due to the game's player base growing up and moving on, and those are their actual words. And also the Clone Wars TV show coming to an end. Remember, this was well before Season 7 was announced. But if you're still wanting to play this game, there's actually a fan-made Clone Wars Adventures emulator. I've never played it myself, but some of the minigames look pretty fun, so I'd be keen to check it out one day. Okay, next up, we have possibly the big biggest Star Wars game of 2010, Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2, the overkill game. You play as the clone of Galen Marrick, aka Starkiller, the secret apprentice of Darth Vader, and search the galaxy for Starkiller's original identity. The story of this game was originally official Star Wars canon, but since Disney took over, it now falls into the Star Wars Legends category. This game also has more force powers than the original Force Unleashed, force lightning, the ability to pick up and crush ATSDs. Starkiller also also now has two lightsabers instead of one. You can find crystals to change the color of the lightsaber, and you can also cut the arms and heads off of stormtroopers, something you couldn't do in the first game. The whole idea of the Force Unleashed games is to make you feel like a super powerful Jedi. Those are the words of the game's lead producer, and it definitely delivers on this experience. However, when this game came out, the game's story arc and repetitive gameplay were criticized. It's definitely recognized more for its over-the-top gameplay than it is for its story and writing, which is totally cool. We all love a good, over-the-top, ridiculous Star Wars adventure. In 2010, there were four Star Wars mobile games released, and the first of those was Star Wars Battle for Hoth, a Star Wars tower defense game where you play as the rebels and defend Hoth from the incoming Imperial invasion of snowtroopers and AT-ATs. The game had 15 different levels, but I don't think you can play it anymore. I couldn't find it on the App Store. This game was one of the several Star Wars games that disappeared after developer THQ's deal with Lucasfilm expired and THQ went into bankruptcy and shut down, unfortunately. Star Wars Arcade Falcon Gunner was a Star Wars mobile augmented reality game. On screen you'd see the window and controls for the Millennium Falcon's gunner cockpit and your iPhone's camera would serve as the backdrop for waves of incoming TIE fighters and Imperial ships. This game looked like lots of fun but was another game that disappeared from existence with the shutdown of THQ. Star Wars Imperial Academy was a mobile freemium shooter and that's just about all it was. A game where you could shoot stormtroopers and enemies with your blaster. The premise of this game is you training as a new recruit to the Imperial Academy. There are different maps and levels but the game wasn't received all that well as it brought nothing new to the genre of mobile shooters. Just a basic shooter with upgrades and microtransactions. Another game that disappeared with THQ. Star Wars Cantina was a time management mobile game where you manage the Star Wars Cantina and try to keep customers happy. You would seat guests, take orders, collect payments, and try and take care of the Cantina's customers as efficiently as possible. The goal was to earn a certain amount of money before the day ended. And this game was removed from the App Store in 2011 with THQ's Star Wars license expiring, like all the other mobile games I've already mentioned. Now there are a bunch of Star Wars games released on CartoonNetwork.com, and most of these games you can still play to this day, just not on Cartoon Network. Star Wars Republic Ace is one of these games, a flash game made for kids where you pilot Anakin's starfighter and blast your way through an endless army of attacking Separatist ships. Star Wars Yoda Battle Slash is a fast paced flash game where you play as Master Yoda and jump from battle droid to battle droid, slashing one after the other while being careful not to fall. Star Wars Airstrike was a flash game where you'd blast through enemy forces and take out a Separatist 
Command Chip while flying an LAAT. But it seems this is one of the games you can't play anymore. I searched the archives of the internet, but it does not exist. If an item does not appear in our records, it does not exist. Star Wars Cad Bane Jedi Hunter is a Clone Wars Flash game where you play as Cad Bane and infiltrate the Senate building. You need to take out all the Senate guards and clone troopers on each level before time runs out. And Cad Bane is easily one of the coolest Clone Wars characters. Shout out to Cad Bane. But this game is basically a point and click sniper shooter. And that was 2010. What a year that was. Now on to 2011, in which three Star Wars games were released. Much fewer games than the previous year. First up is LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars, a LEGO Star Wars game developed by TT Games featuring characters from The Clone Wars TV show and released on PS3, Xbox 360, Nintendo Wii, DS, and 3DS, PlayStation Portable, and Windows. And this game is unfortunately one of the lowest rated LEGO games, even though it features a total of 115 characters from both the Clone Wars TV show and from the films. And although this game was more technically advanced than the previous two LEGO Star Wars games, with better graphics, lighting, more variety in combat, and the game engine being able to support more than 200 moving objects on screen at one time, this game failed to capture the magic of LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. But that's not to say it's not fun to play, still an awesome Star Wars Wars game, especially if you're a fan of the Clone Wars. I think the big issue some people have with it is that it didn't bring anything all that new to LEGO Star Wars. However, it did add features like the ability to throw your lightsaber and split screen combat. I also really love the hub world locations of this game in a Republic cruiser and the Separatist's invisible hand, General Grievous's ship. In 2011, there were also two more smaller LEGO Star Wars games released. The Flash games, LEGO Star Wars Ace Assault 1 and 2. In these games, you can unlock a list of starfighters and face off in 1v1 starfighter dogfights. Another giant Star Wars game was released in 2011 that is still supported and updated to this day, Star Wars The Old Republic. This game is an MMORPG developed by Bioware and set 3,600 years before the events of the Skywalker Saga. The game has a heavy focus on story, which to put it simply, depicts the struggle for power and tension between the Galactic Republic. Republic and Sith Empire. When starting the game, you can choose to join as a member of either of these factions, but in no way does this set your path. The game is all about player choice and moral challenges, and as you play and level up, you'll make decisions which affect your path. You can choose to play as different species, classes, fly starships, have companions, and explore the game's worlds. The Old Republic builds on what we saw in Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 from the early 2000s, but some say it never fully captured what those games did so well. Now on to 2012, and I want to open the year with one of the best Star Wars games ever created, Connect Star Wars. The only Star Wars game ever made with a specific game mode just to see your favorite heroes and villains duking it out on the dance floor. Released only on the Xbox 360 for the console's Connect motion sensor technology, this was actually the last game ever to be published by LucasArts before the studio was shut down and rights were passed on to Disney and EA. The game features four different game modes, Jedi Destiny, the main game mode where you start as a Padawan and embark on missions to become a Jedi, Pod Racing, which is actually pretty decent and comes with different maps and pods for you to choose from, Rancor Rampage, a game mode where you play as a Rancor and go nuts, destroying as much as you possibly can, and Galactic Dance Off, inspired by the Dance Central series of games. In this mode, players follow on-screen moves and dance to Star Wars themed versions versions of pop songs. For example, Jason Derulo's Ride and Solo is now I'm Han Solo. Christina Aguilera's Genie in a Bottle is now Princess in a Battle, and Yolanda B. Cool's We No Speak Americano is now We No Speak Hutties. I have to say, the tracklist ain't half bad. But yes, quite the game this one. Whoever gave the green light for this one to be made was a genius. I really miss LucasArts games. 2012 was also the year we got Angry Birds Star Wars. Originally a mobile game, gameplay follows the same premise as the normal Angry Birds game, although this one is Star Wars themed. 
themed. And I didn't know this, but Angry Birds Star Wars exists on pretty much every platform you can name. Android, iOS, Blackberry 10, Windows Phone, Microsoft Windows, OS X, Facebook, Blackberry Tablet OS, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation Vita, Wii, Wii U, and Nintendo 3DS. For something that's just started as a mobile game, it certainly had a wide reach. Not sure why you'd play this on a console though. Anyway, if you've never played Angry Birds, the game is all about causing as much destruction as possible by flinging your bird into a structure and trying to knock it down, and you can activate special abilities which give you more destructive powers to try and achieve a higher score. Okay, on to 2012's Flash games. There were seven of them in total. Star Wars Racer Rush, a top-down pod racing game, Aquatic Adventure, an underwater game where you play as Kid Fisto, controlling a submarine on Mon Calamari and shoot enemies to defend the planet, Star Wars Jawa Junkyard Droids, a game where you put together astromech droids and also have to memorize a droid's design and do your best to recreate it, Star Wars Battle Orders, a Lego game where you strategically use spacecrafts to colonize planets and overcome enemy forces, Star Wars Ewok Village, a game where you have to build an Ewok village and keep attracting more Ewoks to your village by building specific structures and keeping them happy, Star Wars Sith Assault, a puzzle game where you have to use force powers to knock over and destroy T-Series tactical droids, and finally Star Wars Galactic Spy, kind of like the Where's Wally of Star Wars games. In this game you have to spot certain characters, objects, and other items on Tatooine. So that was 2012. Now 2013 was a quieter year for AAA Star Wars titles, but there was still a good selection of games released. Lego Star Wars The Yoda Chronicles is first, a game for iOS devices and the Lego Star Wars website. Set during the Clone Wars, the game features scenes from the Lego Star Wars films and has 15 different levels and over 30 Lego Star Wars minifig characters, which I think are just smaller pieces than the regular bricks. You can also choose to follow the game's quest from two different sides, Light Side where you'll be playing as Yoda, or Dark Side as Count Dooku and other Star Wars villains. You can control groups of clone troopers, fly starships, but the game does play quite differently to the larger Lego Star Wars games. Definitely feels like a standalone mobile title. Next we have Star Wars Pinball, a digital game developed by Zen Studios. It's basically a 3D pinball game with a Star Wars theme. So instead of it being a real pinball machine, it's on your computer screen. It actually reminds me of a pinball game I used to play way back on Windows 95 called Space Cadet 3D Pinball. Feels like it's heavily based on this. And there were a couple of expansions for Star Wars Pinball, each releasing a few different themed tables for you to play on. Next in 2013 was Angry Birds Star Wars 2, the prequel to the first Angry Birds Star Wars game. This game features characters from the Star Wars prequel trilogy as well as Star Wars Rebels. However, unlike the first Angry Birds Star Wars, this edition is only available on mobile and Windows. They really brought it down with the amount of consoles and platforms it was available on. Star Wars Tiny Death Star was a business simulation mobile game developed by Disney Mobile and Nimblebit. The premise of the game was to build a Death Star by decorating and creating different floors and levels for galactic bitizens to hang out on. For example, you could create a hollow chess hall, a cafe, and other locations all based on planets throughout the galaxy. Although the game was buggy, it was a huge financial success for a mobile developer Nimblebit. That was until Disney removed the game from the App Store and Google Play without even telling the developer. Disney claimed they wanted to take Star Wars games in another direction and focus on other larger titles such as Star Wars Commander. Although I have no idea why they didn't tell the devs that they were going to remove it from the store. Can you imagine that if one day they just take down your app. Also in 2013, Rise of the Hut Cartel, an expansion for Star Wars The Old Republic was released. This was a major update for The Old Republic, introducing the expansion storyline focused on the rising threat of the Huts, also announcing the Galactic Starfighter game mode with 12v12 space combat. Next in 2013, we have quite a different game, Star Wars Clone Trooper, a plug and play video game, which is basically a game you buy from the store that comes with a small console, 
which you plug into your TV to play. It was made by Jax TV Games, Jax with two Ks. To play the game, you use a light gun and place a light sensor on top of your TV so the game knows the direction you're shooting. It works kind of similar to an arcade machine. You'll play in first person through a bunch of different levels, shooting enemies that pop up on screen and even get to face Count Dooku. I'm not sure how you're supposed to go about taking him down with a blaster, but you can shoot him in the face, which is possibly one of the best parts of this game. Next up is one of the biggest surprises on this list, a game which by its title, I really wasn't expecting all that much from. Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar. Yes, this is an official game. You play as Jango Fett, dressed in a red Christmas outfit, and your objective is to collect gifts throughout the galaxy to deliver to the Wookiees for Life Day. Why is Jango delivering gifts to the Wookiees? The premise of the game is ridiculous, but it actually plays as a decent side scroller. Shooting feels good, you can drop grenades, and each level is kind of like a puzzle you need to solve to find all the gifts. I'll definitely be revisiting this one, it, it's a lot of fun. And the final game for 2013 is Star Wars Force Collection, a digital card game from Konami. The game featured over 230 Star Wars character cards from films 1 to 7, and the main focus of the game was on questing, where you travel to different planets to defeat enemies and level up while gaining new cards. And the game was shut down in April 2018 due to a dwindling player base and the cost of the game's development support not being able to be met. This is generally the case with most mobile games with a live service. Once they stop earning money, they're shut down. Alright, so now we're on to 2014, and although there weren't any huge Star Wars titles released this year, it was a packed year for Star Wars game releases, with 14 Star Wars games released over the course of the year. We start things off with Star Wars Assault Team, a mobile game with a focus on turn-based strategy and card battle elements. And less than a year after its launch, it was removed from sale due to Disney wanting to focus on priority titles like Star Wars Commander. We've heard that one before, haven't we? Star Wars Commander is a freemium strategy mobile and desktop game, which takes a lot of inspiration from the popular Clash of Clans. It's kind of like a tower defense game with a few more factors in play. Other real players can attack your base, or you can go out and attack other players or an AI controlled base. It's set in the Galactic Civil War era, and you can choose to play as either the Rebels or Empire, each with their own unique troopers, vehicles and hero reinforcement characters you can summon into play. If you're looking to play a Star Wars mobile game that's still active, this game might be for you. Next is another LEGO mobile game, LEGO Star Wars Micro Fighters. Developed by TT Games, the same developer who made the original LEGO Star Wars games and the new Skywalker Saga. Players choose to pilot one of six vehicles and fly through a track collecting studs, destroying enemies and fighting bosses. Overall, it's not bad for a bit of fun, but it gets pretty repetitive early on and you'll probably want to put it down after about five minutes. In 2014 there were three expansions released for Star Wars The Old Republic and the first of those was Galactic Starfighter, a new game mode focused on space PvP combat. Next was Galactic Strongholds which gave players the ability to buy and customize in-game homes, strongholds and capital ships. And then Shadow of Raven was released later in the year, the fourth expansion for The Old Republic. The story focused on the Sith Empire and Galactic Republic's efforts to defeat the Order of Raven, and also introduced Rishi and Yavin 4 as new worlds for the game. Next in 2014 was Star Wars Journeys The Phantom Menace, an iPhone app with details and information about the Phantom Menace, kind of like a database. But the app also had a pod racing game mode on Mos Eisley. Decent pod racing, similar to what we've seen in some of the other pod racing games, so nothing groundbreaking here. And next, another LEGO game. LEGO Star Wars Ultimate Rebel, a top-down flash game where you control a bunch of different LEGO vehicles and pilot your way through different maps destroying enemies. In the game, you need to find keys which unlock certain areas of each map and make your way to the exit without being killed. Star Wars Scene Maker was a mobile game in which players could place characters, music and dialogue into Star Wars locations and create your own Star Wars scene. Players could also select various character animations such as turning on a lightsaber and each scene would play out for a maximum one minute. The game was retired sometime in 2018 and is no longer available, which isn't such a bad thing as it really was not all that memorable. Next up is Agent P Rebel Spy, a Star Wars themed game featuring characters from the Phineas and Ferb Disney TV show based on the Star Wars themed special episode of the show. You play as Perry the Platypus and make your way through the side scroller levels, defeating
defeating enemies and fighting bosses. This game released along with another game based on the TV show crossover of Phineas and Ferb Star Wars Droid Masters, in which you help Phineas and Ferb make machines to collect moisture from the broken vaporators on Tatooine. Next is Star Wars Rebels Ghost Raid, a free online flash game based on the Star Wars Rebels TV show. You fly the ghost and take down Imperial ships and perform a series of raids on the Empire collecting cargo and supplies for the growing rebellion. Next we have another tower defense game, Star Wars Galactic Defense. The game had seven different maps, Tatooine, Hoth, Endor, Geonosis, Volusia, Kashyyyk and Coruscant, each with 10 levels of increasingly difficult incoming attacks. Unfortunately the game was only available for less than two years with its servers shut down in April 2016. And I do find it interesting that Disney decided to release two tower defense games in the same year, this and Star Wars Commander, the latter being a much more developed game with many more layers. Alright, now for another LEGO game, LEGO Star Wars The New Yoda Chronicles, the sequel to the first Yoda Chronicles. We don't serve droids here. I am not a droid. This is a mobile game also available on the LEGO website and featured a variety of mini games such as going on a quest as Yoda or Darth Vader or flying a starfighter and shooting down enemies. Unfortunately, like so many of the other mobile games on this list, you've heard me say this like 10 times now, it was removed from the App Store and I'm not sure if there's still a web version you can play online. Next is another game based on Rebels. Star Wars Rebels Rebel Strike is a turn-based top-down strategy browser game where you play through different levels, each character having two actions per turn and take down the Empire's troops while infiltrating their bases. You could also upgrade each character as you progress through the level, making them more powerful. Exciting stuff. Okay, LEGO Star Wars Empire vs Rebels is an online side-scroller in which you control a selection of different characters and guide them through different levels, finding secrets, solving puzzles and defeating enemies. This game reminds me of the LEGO Star Wars Advent Calendar, which I mentioned earlier. And finally, to end 24 we have Star Wars Journey's Beginnings, an iOS app with interactive books, data banks, and mini games based on the prequel trilogy. This game also includes some content from Star Wars Journey's The Phantom Menace. I think the idea was that they were going to make one of these Journey's games for each Star Wars film, but these two were the only ones ever made, probably because they were never really all that good. So 2015, a huge year for Star Wars games, because this was the year we got Star Wars Battlefront, the EA reboot of the beloved Battlefront series. And although it didn't deliver on everything the original games did so well and there were complaints of a lack of content, man was this game fun, for a while anyway, and incredibly detailed and pretty. This game was the first real high definition creation of some of these Star Wars planets and you definitely have to give DICE, the studio behind EA's Battlefront and Battlefield, lots of credit for making this game look and sound gorgeous. The Outpost beta map on Hoth is still one of my favorite maps in any game I've ever played to this day because it feels like the battle in Empire Strikes Back. The scale, the feeling of being hopeless as the rebels, seeing all your fellow rebel troops frantically shooting at the exposed walkers while trying to fight off snow troopers, even just the way the snow would puff after you shot it. And yes, the game wasn't without its problems, but this was the game that made Nine Nub, Greedo and Dengar household names. The game had fantastic emotes and Star Wars movie moments mixed with a bit of chaos. Lots of good memories playing this. Love the first Battlefront. There have been several memorable Star Wars arcade games released over the past 30 years, and one of those is Star Wars Battle Pod, an arcade game developed by Bandai Namco which runs in Unreal Engine 3. You sit in the arcade machine's cockpit and get to pull levers and press buttons to fly through six different scenarios based on scenes in the films. There's the Battle of Yavin where you get to attack the Death Star and perform the trench run, Battle of Hoth where you pilot a snow speeder and take down AATs, you can drive a speeder bike on Endor, the space battle from Endor, and then the fifth scenario is not based on the films. You play as Darth Vader and try prevent the rebels from escaping after the destruction of the Death Star. You can actually kill Han Solo in this game mode as well. There was also an updated version of the game with a scenario from The Force Awakens where you pilot an X-Wing on Takadana and protect General Organa's transport from First Order ships. So there are two 
two different versions of these machines. The first is the standard edition, which to buy for your home costs $35,000. And the premium edition, which comes with an engraved plate with your name on it, is $100,000 US dollars. Gonna get one of these for the office. Next is a Star Wars themed version of a Disney game, Disney Infinity 3.0. It's an action adventure sandbox where you have to buy physical toys and figurines to be able to use certain characters in the game. There are three Star Wars themed playsets and campaigns for the game. Twilight of the Republic is based on the prequels, Rise Against the Empire is based on the original trilogy, and The Force Awakens. The game also features characters from the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels and was a critical success. Lightsaber combat, gameplay and movement felt smooth and like a mix of The Force Unleashed, a brawler game and Kingdom Hearts. There are a few combo moves and special attacks and this was the final game in the Disney Infinity series. Got discontinued. Next up is a mobile game, Star Wars Rebels Recon Missions, a game that was only available to download for just over a year. It's a side-scroller adventure game where you play as Ezra Bridger and make your way through levels using your lightsaber and blaster to defeat enemies, bosses, drive some vehicles and interact with other characters from Star Wars Rebels. The game's story is based around you rescuing citizens of Lothal and looks like a pretty decent game for fans of Star Wars Rebels. It's a shame so many of these mobile games get shut down. Which leads to the next game on this list, Star Wars Uprising, another mobile game with RPG gameplay heavily focused on character progression. The game was set between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens where you'd engage in the ongoing battle of what was left of the Galactic Empire. You play as a smuggler and would level up your skills and abilities to help better fight enemies, engage in sector battles against AI, and also real-time battles with other players. The game was removed from existence in November 2016 because, as stated by the developer, it was no longer achieving the level of success needed to maintain the game. Next up is one of the most popular Star Wars mobile games ever made, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, an EA game. Set in a cantina somewhere in the Star Wars galaxy, players collect Star Wars characters from the films, TV shows, and Star Wars Legends characters from Knights of the Old Republic. Gameplay is turn-based and you build teams using your collected characters and fight against other players or AI. The game has various game modes including a light and dark side campaign with three waves of battles, arena battles, galactic war for large-scale battles, along with the ability to complete daily challenges, join guilds, participate in raids, and lots more. And like lots of other mobile games, Galaxy of Heroes is pretty heavy on microtransactions, allowing you to purchase characters and upgrades true mobile RPG style. Possible pay to win here also. Next we have the fifth expansion for Star Wars The Old Republic, Knights of the Fallen Empire. And along with it, one of the best Star Wars trailers I've ever seen. The expansion raised the level cap for players and introduced 13 new story chapters to The Old Republic along with a bunch of new planets and content in the game. Lego Star Wars Force Builder is a game released for iOS and Android in which players use the Force to build their own starfighters and ships using Lego pieces from a variety of Star Wars vehicles. You can select different colours for the ships and get to fly and test them through a set course. And unfortunately this game appears to be no longer available for download. Star Wars Heroes Path is a strategy mobile game based on the events of A New Hope. The aim of the game is to lead Star Wars characters through different puzzles using special abilities and trying to avoid setting off the enemy's reactions that'll stop you from completing each puzzle. The game also features some moving comics which tell the story of A New Hope as you play. Next is Star Wars Rebels Team Tactics, a free online flash game based on the events of The Siege of Lothal from Star Wars Legends. Similar to Recon Missions, this game is a side-scroller where you play as Ezra Bridger, and in the game you can also collect tokens to spend in the Star Wars Arcade, a browser-based hub game in which you can earn trophies and decorate your own room using Star Wars characters and items you find in this game and other games. Another game released in 2015 based on Star Wars Rebels, Strike Missions, is a three-dimensional side-scroller in that you can move back and forward as well as up and down. In this game you play as the Star Wars Rebels and infiltrate an Imperial Star Destroyer along with an Imperial base while attempting to free a Rebel prisoner. Gameplay in Strike Missions is more wave-based and as you control a character, some of the other Rebels will help defeat incoming stormtroopers and enemies, so you're all fighting them all at once, all together as a team. Star Wars Blaster Strike is another plug and play video game. It comes with a light sensor which you plug into and place on top of your TV, along with Han Solo's DL-44 
or Blaster, which you'll be using to play the game. You play through the entire original trilogy and participate in battles and locations seen throughout the films, shooting your Blaster as enemies appear on screen. You gotta play one of these one day. I miss, I haven't played a game like this in about 10 years. Last time I went to an arcade to play something like this. And that was it for 2015. So 2016 was another big year for Star Wars games. We're kicking things off with Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens, released about six months after the film came out. This version of Lego Star Wars features over 204 playable characters and all of the main characters were voiced by the main cast of the films, which is incredible, including Daisy Ridley, Oscar Isaac, John Boyega, Adam Driver, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, I got a bad feeling about this, and more. I can't believe they got Harrison Ford to voice a Lego character. The game also featured some scenes that bridge the gap between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. And some new gameplay mechanics included multi-builds, giving players more building options to access different parts of the game, as well as the ability to hide behind cover during blaster battles. And this was the final LEGO Star Wars game before the Skywalker Saga, releasing in 2020. There was no LEGO game for The Last Jedi or Rise of Skywalker. After this one, they decided to go in a different direction and just make one giant Star Wars game. Next up is something very different. We have the Star Wars Battlefront Rogue One X-Wing VR Mission, a VR expansion for Star Wars Battlefront utilizing the new PS VR headset. This is actually exclusive to PS4 and followed the Rebel Squadron known as Red Flight and their mission to extract a U-Wing from planet Wobani. Although the mission was short, running from approximately 15 to 20 minutes, it was incredibly immersive sitting in the cockpit of an X-Wing, being able able to touch and interact with buttons on the console while flying through space fighting off enemy ships. My hope is that this will be developed into something much larger and is only the first of what's to come with Star Wars Space VR. Gonna get that manual rolling in space, that'd be amazing. First Battlefront didn't have manual rolling. LEGO Star Wars Empire vs Rebels is an updated version of the previous Empire vs Rebels game, a web-based side-scroller adventure game. You play through a few different maps like Hoth, Tatooine, Coruscant and unlock more characters as you progress. Next is Star Wars Yoda's Jedi Training, a side-scroller running game based on Luke's Jedi Training on Dagobah. The game runs for you so you don't need to hold a button to run, but you'll need to jump and collect coins and slash your lightsaber to make it as far as possible before missing a jump or dying. You run into a cactus on Dagobah, you're gonna die. And this is also another one of those games where you can collect tokens to spend in the Star Wars arcade. Now for another Star Wars VR game. Star Wars Trials on Tatooine. Developed by ILM XLab, this game felt more like a tech demo than a game and laid the foundations and basic mechanics for what eventually became Vader Immortal. Set on Tatooine, you can interact with R2-D2, fight off stormtroopers, and help defend the Millennium Falcon from Imperial attack. And even though the game only goes for about six minutes, it was pretty groundbreaking stuff at the time. Quite immersive seeing the Star Wars universe come to life in VR and getting to actually hold a lightsaber. Even Vader Immortal I feel is the first of what's to come with the future of VR Star Wars projects, but I'll get to that one soon. Star Wars X-Wing Fighter is an online flash game where you fly Poe Dameron's ship and defeat as many incoming TIE fighter attacks as possible before your ship gets destroyed. Poe's X-Wing automatically shoots regular blaster cannons, but you can also charge up a large laser beam to deal heavy damage to enemies. However, when I was playing this game, when I died, the game got stuck and I couldn't restart or respawn unless I reloaded the page. So looks like it's got a few bugs and breaks the universe when Poe gets killed. Doesn't like it when he gets killed. He's not allowed to get killed. No one dies in Disney movies and Disney characters. Next is Star Wars Rogue One, Brutes on the Ground, another free online browser game where you play as Jin Erso, K2SO, Cassian Andor, and other Rogue One characters from a top-down view. You move around the map and fight the rebellion, taking out groups of enemies by clicking on them with your mouse. Another game in the Star Wars arcade. Knights of the the Eternal Throne is the next expansion for Star Wars The Old Republic, and follows on from the events in the previous expansion, Knights of the Fallen Empire. Released in celebration of The Old Republic's five-year anniversary, it introduced two new gameplay features called Galactic Command and Uprisings, featuring new battles and activities to perform across the galaxy. Now, 2017 was a formative year for Star Wars gaming, as this was the year that began laying the groundwork for what Star Wars gaming is today. The biggest release of the year was easily Star Wars Battlefront 2, the second EA Battlefront and the first to feature content from all three Star Wars eras. It also introduced a class system with reinforced
reinforcements and hero characters being unlocked each match through the battle point system. However, the game also launched with a dark cloud of microtransactions and a loot box pay to win system hanging overhead. Not a good start for what was supposed to be the evolution of the original beloved Star Wars Battlefront 2 released back in 2005. Since launch, microtransactions have been removed, then tweaked to only unlock cosmetics, the progression system was rebuilt, and a heavy focus on Clone Wars content made EA's Battlefront 2 possibly the most popular Star Wars game being played to this day. It now offers the experience of being a giant large scale Star Wars battle simulator, in which players can relive Star Wars battles seen throughout the galaxy, play as their favourite heroes and villains, and engage in newer offline and co-op game modes. Battlefront 2 is definitely the biggest redemption story in Star Wars gaming, now featuring nearly 50 different maps and dozens of characters from the films. Epic game. Epic how far it's come. The next game on this list is Star Wars Force Arena, a free PvP real-time strategy mobile game. The game was initially set in the Galactic Civil War era, but later updates included the Clone Wars and New Republic eras. Players could control squads of Star Wars characters and vehicles from all these different eras, and the game played similar to Clash Royale, the aim of the game being to destroy the enemy squad's defenses to open them up to further attack. What was impressive about Force Arena was the massive roster of playable characters, spanning from the original films to all the newer films to the Clone Wars, Rogue One, and even some of the characters from the Marvel comic books. Unfortunately, a lot of this game's content was hidden behind a massive paywall. The game arguably being pay to win. And this eventually led to its demise, and after two years, the game was shut down and removed from all app stores. So, in 2017, another unique game was released contributing to the development of lightsabers and Star Wars virtual reality experiences. Star Wars Jedi Challenges is an augmented reality game in which you wear a headset, hold an actual lightsaber, and fight a variety of Star Wars characters right there in your own living room. This type of game I feel is still the beginning of more of what's to come from Star Wars VR experiences. And now, another game from ILM X Lab experimenting with VR is Star Wars Droid Repair Bay, playable on the HTC Vibe and Samsung Gear. A tie-in for 2017's The Last Jedi, gameplay involves repairing droids aboard Leia Organa's ship using your droid arms. You're a droid repairing other droids. Okay, so the next game on this list isn't actually a video game. Star Wars Pinball, released in 2017, is a limited edition pinball machine based on the original trilogy. It has a model Death Star, TIE Fighter, and lots of colorful flashing lights. Need to get one of these for the bombastic office, I think. Definitely a good idea. So the final game for 2017 is LEGO Star Wars Empire vs Rebels, another update for this series of games. Like the other games, you play as a bunch of different Star Wars characters and can have an adventure right there in your web browser. Now 2018 was a bit of a strange year for Star Wars games. I can't find a single game released that year. Not a mobile game, perhaps there was a Flash game released, but there's not too much info about these online. 2018 was a formative year for what Battlefront 2 is today, with the first of the Clone Wars updates coming late in the year introducing Geonosis, Obi-Wan and General Grievous, along with a progression update redesigning how the game works. But apart from that, not much else happened this year. Solo came out I guess, that was one thing, and the Old Republic received the Jedi Under Siege expansion. So 2019, what a year this was for Star Wars gaming. First up, we got Vader Immortal, a three part VR game taking place between The Revenge of the Sith and Rogue One. The game delves into Darth Vader's time on Mustafar, and you play as an unknown smuggler, eventually learning you have force powers and there is more to Mustafar past than you think. Released a few years after the first Star Wars VR game, I think you can really see how quickly this technology is advancing. The game was actually nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Innovation in Interactive Media. I didn't know video games could receive Emmy nominations. So onto Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, one of the best games, if not the best of the decade. Set five years after Order 66 and the fall of the Jedi Order, you play as Cal Kestis 
Empress, a Padawan in hiding from the Empire and its Inquisitors. Gameplay takes inspirations from lots of action adventure games released over the past 20 years and is heavily inspired by the Metroidvania genre. Combat is tight and satisfying, the maps are gorgeous and huge, making you feel like you're exploring these Star Wars worlds and the story is compelling. Jedi Fallen Order was developed by Respawn, the same dev studio behind Titanfall and the wildly popular Battle Royale Apex Legends. And I'm interested to see more of what's to come from Respawn. Feel like they might have a few Star Wars games up their sleeve yet. 2019 also featured the next expansion for The Old Republic. Simply titled Onslaught, this update expanded on the story from Jedi Under Siege, the last expansion. Certainly a memorable and important decade for Star Wars gaming. I think it's interesting now that we're here to look back and see just how much Star Wars games have evolved over this decade, which makes me excited for the future of Star Wars gaming. So did I miss any games from the 2010s that weren't on this list? And what's your favorite Star Wars game from all the ones I mentioned? Let me know in the comments. And for a look back at some other Star Wars games or for anything else to do with Star Wars gaming, stick around on the channel or watch one of these videos here. And follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Discord for lots more on Star Wars memes, gaming news, life stuff. It's all there, all of it, on those platforms. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.